Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, helpful vermiculture community, you are in the right place. It's 4th of July weekend and it is hot. It is 81.8 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement here and 55% humidity. So the worms are loving it. Any warmer and the European night crawlers are not going to be loving it. So today, what we're going to do is a step-by-step -step look at my 55 gallon worm bin blue. Uh, but first of all, um, a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy, controversy about gloves versus no gloves. Now I promote gloves if you have any hand injuries, which I do. So I have these gloves, which I think are called cool, cool job. I don't know. I've bought them like three or four times, mostly because I lose them in my yard, but they're good. They're waterproof and uh, they have like a good tactile um, surface here so things don't slip out of your hands because I am a bit of a butterfinger. So back to the thing. So today we're going to look in on blue and I'm going to show you all the things I do and why. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to look over the whole bin. And this goes for any size bin, but for something this large, um, for sure. So first things we want to do is we want to look out for anything weird. Now, I did add some old potting soil. And what I'm pulling out here are lyca beads. They're clay beads, and they will last forever. The worms, nobody's going to eat these. Nobody. So I'm going to pull those out and put them back in rotation for my orchids and houseplants. Then I'm going to look for anything else that the worms may not want. So what I am seeing is a little bit of plastic here and there. You know how it happens, right? You take in some shredded paper donations, and the next thing you know, you've got little windows um, here in your worm bin. And so the worms put them up to the top, I think. Um, either that or it's worm bin elves. I'm just going to say, I think, that it is the worms doing it. And I pick those out and then they go into the trash. Good worms. Okay, so we've done some evaluation and we've picked out the things that are not ever going to get done. And then moving on to step two is to fluff our finished end. So I'm going to dig in here and kind of feel through it a little bit. I'm going to pick out anything that's real big that I know the worms are not going to finish up. I'm going to get some air into the bin while I'm pulling out sticks and such. And more plastic. Ugh, that's frustrating. Okay, so what is my goal doing this here? My goal is to get some air into this end of the bin and then also to evaluate it to see, is it getting ready to harvest? Now what I have here are a couple of worms and the goal with this end of the bin and with this whole type of bin and you know, in the whole idea with the wedge system is that the worms are constantly moving towards the feeding end and leaving the area with the finished castings. And I'm actually seeing, first of all, it's very, very wet. And second of all, I still have quite a few worms in here, which tells me a couple of things. One, they're not ready to get out. So they're not, which means there's still something to eat down here. They're not going to stay here if there's nothing to eat. So it's pretty wet. And it's got lots of worms. So this tells me I'm not getting a harvest today. So I'm completely getting all the way down to the bottom. It is about a foot deep. So um, it is really important that I get in there and add some oxygen so that it does not go anaerobic. Because that is not good for anything we want in this worm bin. So it is very heavy when it is this wet. I mean, you could make you know, a mud ball with this. So that is, it's very, very wet, which is, you know, it's 55% humidity here in the basement. So I'm not super surprised that it is this wet. There's basically no way that it is going to dry down in this kind of weather. Um, it has been hot and rainy, and uh, this feels more like Florida, in the last couple of months than it, it does Illinois. Normally we cool down at night and it gets hot during the day, 
but it's still been staying over 70 at night. And then it'll be 90 today outside. So I'm just going to keep flipping and I'm using my senses. I'm looking here at the things to see is there anything that needs to be adjusted other than removing the large bits? Everything smells perfect. It smells, you know, like a forest, or at least it smells like a forest in Illinois. Um, I don't really have anything to go by as far as Australia or anybody down under, but uh, this smells like a normal forest floor. Kind of like wet leaves or after a rain chicken bones from a project about three years ago. So lots of worms, lots and lots of worms. So this is telling me that I'm not going to get a harvest anytime soon. So as we're getting into this middle part here, lots and lots of worms, and I'm finding lots of big chunks of things. So they are not, they're not done with what I've given them. And that's totally fine. I've got my fall seeds started. Started some squash and some brassicas. Got some of those going in the in the garden now. Uh, direct sowing because it's warm enough, and it's also been raining enough that I don't have to really worry about things drying out too much. So now we're getting into the middle section here. This is where we expect to see a ton of worms. And I do, I do see the ton of worms. So one of the things we're looking at is, you know, of course, removing any of these large chunks in anticipation of a future harvest. And then also making sure that we're moving everything down towards this finished end so that we'll have some room to feed today. All right, well, I would say that this is nice, I'll keep my, my fingers clean, but uh, I was working in the garage and in the garden yesterday, so even though I'm not digging around in a worm bin with my bare hands, my nails still look like I've been digging in a worm bin. Nothing a little bit of bleach spray and a nail brush can't handle. So who, here we are right at the midline. So this food will have been fed probably four months ago, six months for here, and then about four months for here. When you're first starting one of these bins, you know, it's, it's not likely that you'll get a harvest inside of six months that is a large percentage of castings. So as I'm going down, I'm looking at kind of like the health of the worms, and they do look a bit slow to me. So maybe almost 82 degrees in the basement has made them unhappy. So we'll see once we get to the final end how much food they've eaten because then I will have to adjust my plan. So here's a red wiggler and normally they're pretty feisty and uh, he's just a little wiggly. He's not feisty. When I run into a blue worm they might still be feisty at this at this temperature. They're more of a tropical worm so a lot of times you will see them zipping along even if it is really hot. Oops, another play about pellet. Okay, so this is pretty clumpy. Got some roots in here from a plant that died. And I put pretty much anything in here, even if it's not going to degrade in one cycle. I'm totally fine with that. Here we go. We got a blue worm here. Still, he was trying to escape, so he was looking zippy a minute ago. Shy for the camera, I think. All right, so we're getting into a lot of worms in here. That's good. But of course, I did add four pounds of worms that were gifted to me from New Soil. If you want to look at that video, that is up in the comments in the comments section. You can go and look and see the unpackaging of the, the New Soil worms. 
they showed up super happy and ready to roll. So I don't think there's going to be any shortage of worms any place in this bin. All right, let me get you moved down and we will look at the business end, the feeding end of the bin. Okay, so here we are. This is probably one feeding ago here, and then beyond that was the last time. So we're starting to see that soil that I am trying to refresh, putting it in the bin. So you can see the perlite in here, and that'll just end up back in the garden. It will not degrade in a worm bin, or if it does, it'll be too slow to make a difference. There we go. Still lots of lots of worms. The moisture is looking good. That's one of the first things that I look at is how is the moisture looking in the bin? Do I have anything to worry about? Should I add anything? And then I'm also looking for pests, especially down here where it's been fed recently and I am not seeing anything. I actually think the mouse I had in the basement offed itself. It jumped into a bucket that was next to the worm bin and uh, that was probably a couple weeks ago. So it did not survive jumping into an open bucket. So that saved me having to put out any traps or anything. So the moisture is staying great. Especially when you're looking for worms to breed, you want everything to stay super moist. Put in the comments below on the topic of the word moist. Is it like gross, repulsive to you, or are you like, dude, it's just a word? Because some people have some very strong feelings about the word moist. I tell you, I've worked with people that, you know, you could not even say that, like you were talking something dirty. Not in a good way. I guess, sort of. I digress. Put that in the comments below. Are you a person that finds that word repulsive or, or not? I used to, in the beginning of my channel, I used to go out of my way not to use the word because some people I know are so freaked out by it. But now I figure if you're willing to watch this channel and put your hands in a worm bin, you can't possibly be bothered by a little word that actually defines a very important quality of a worm bin. All right, here we are at the end. I'm gonna pull off all this dry stuff here. Put that on the top so that any passing critter won't smell the food that I've put in here. And it did not get wet, so that works out. All right, now if there is going to be a worm ball, this is where it is going to be. So, fingers crossed on a worm ball. Somebody asked me if I would do a video mid cycle for blue and I forgot. Sorry. We did give them a pretty good feeding last time, but I don't know if it was good enough to um, still be here after three weeks, especially at this temperature with this many worms. So lots of avocado stuff. It's turning into paste here. The smell is still good. I just upturned another piece of ginger and garlic clove. Definitely, oh, now I can smell that garlic. That was definitely garlic. I wasn't sure, but I'm sure now. It definitely is garlic. No vampires in the worm bin. All right, so we're getting there. Pretty pleased about the level of the moisture. They're getting into eating all these roots that I gave them, but alas, most of the food is gone and there are no worm balls. Okay, so we have made a very good amount of room here. I do have a lot of bedding for them. Oops, so, well there you go. There's a, I have disturbed a bit of a worm ball. So there you go. That's, that's all I've got to show for you. Sorry. <laughs> 
All right. But this next feeding is a little unusual in that I did puree everything. Some people had asked, you know, does it help? Yeah, it does help for sure. Um, I actually pureed the food because I thought that uh, mouse was still down here and the mouse had been running off with little bits of apple and, and stealing the worm food. So I thought, not you, no, not this time you're not going to. I'm gonna get pureed food and then that's not something they can get a hold of. So either or, it'll be fine. All right, so we got this container of all of the leftover food. We'll put that at the bottom so that it can soak up any of the uh, the food liquid that I put in now and hopefully that will help that stuff out and help it process a little bit faster. All right, so first off, because it is a liquid feeding, I'm going to do something that I used to do a long time ago with my lasagna method where I didn't shred any of my paper. I just put layers on top of layers of cardboard and fed in between. I have a playlist if you want to go look at that. It's a really good way to do a worm bin if you don't have a shredder. Okay, so here is the, the bottom layer that I'm going to use. All of these just hand torn up parts of cardboard and in theory they should all smush down and absorb any extra liquid there is from the liquidy feeding. A couple more pieces, some dry shreds a little bit. Okay, the only thing I did not puree was the tea bags. So I think first things first, I'm gonna spread that out and I think I might even layer the feeding because it is kind of big. This is about a gallon and a half. And so I'm gonna put half of it here and spread that all out, get that, maybe a little more. So this is actually pureed kale and squash, onions, noodles, uh, eggshell, I can't even remember what else. Basically everything I would normally feed, uh, papaya, but it all got pureed this time in hopes of foiling the critters that might, the macro critters that might be in the basement. There we go. Feed that out. This is almost identical to my lasagna feeding that I used to do. Okay, then on to the prepared bedding, which is shredded cardboard. I don't even have any uh, coconut coir or anything in here this time. It's just shredded cardboard that has been dampened with kelp meal. Um, if you want to look in the Amazon links, the kind of liquid kelp that I buy is in there. Uh, and if you don't like the idea of having a big jug of something laying about, they actually do make it in a powder. It's last, I don't, I don't even know if anything expires, but it will uh, store in your cabinet and you won't spill it, that's for sure, if you buy the powdered kind. Now, mind you, I'm digging in water. My hands are still dry. Which is nice if you're gardening when it's super wet and muddy. Okay. I think the last time I picked off some of the dry bedding off the top and I put it in a bucket and then I forgot to give it back to them. So that's what that last little bit is. It's been sitting in a bucket waiting for me to put it back. So now if you want to know how I build this kind of a, a system from scratch, I will link a video right over here to the European Nightcrawlers where I started a wedge bin just like this the last time I did a video. So I'll link that over there so you can see it from the beginning. Sometimes it's hard to tell what things, how things happened when it's, you know, already in progress. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody. Have a good day.